let's consider the, uh, the logistics involved in training in real estate. I remember, you know, back in the mid 80s when I got into real estate, I used to travel pretty far and wide to, a tra to, a to attend training sessions. And these days, uh, franchises and real estate broker networks have a very, very, very real challenge uh, in meeting training demands and training schedules uh, because, frankly, they are very, very expensive. Uh, traveling is very, very expensive, and the cost of training is expensive on both sides of the, uh, of the equation. Um, if there is a, uh, an event, uh, participants have to book travel and they have to book hotels. Um, with webinars, that's not necessary because the participants don't have to go any further than their home base, whether that's an office setting or their actual home you know, or offices. Webinars can reach people where they are without the need for, you know, for travel and hotels. Uh, by the same token, um, events management is, is a whole different ballgame. Um, events management, of course, is is something that comes into play when there is a training, and uh, and in the old days, and and in, in in present day in present day, when there is a live training, there are you know a number of logistical uh, factors that you have to consider and costs. Uh, you know, certainly not the least of those is booking a training facility, and whether that's a conference room or a ballroom or you know a room in a hotel and other facilities that, you know, that involves a, a, a very, very great deal of money. Um, there is the cost of, uh, of audiovisual equipment. Uh, there may be additional costs for technical support connected with that, uh, involved with the setup, involved with maintaining that, involved with making sure that it runs okay and having somebody on hand to troubleshoot. Uh, there is a cost of meals and refreshments. Uh, when people are, you know, attending a training, they, they get thirsty and they become hungry and there are meals to, to take care of. And whether the organization is responsible for that or the attendees, there are still costs involved. Um, there is also the cost involved with, uh, with office supplies, with paper, with all of those uh, consumables. Uh, there is a great, you know, good, a good deal of uh, uh, cost involved with Wi-Fi access in many places around the country. And there is, you know, there's work and, uh, and cost involved with follow-up after the event. Okay, with a webinar, what happens there? Okay, what happens there is that the conference provider, the per, you know, the, the service that is offering the webinar service, providing that service, actually does most of the heavy lifting for you. The, web, the conference provider will, you know, will have a, uh, a function that will help you reserve the participants' time. Um, you will send out invitations to people on your list. Uh, the conference provider will collect registrations, which are the RSVPs, to make sure that people will be attending. Uh, you'll be able to keep track of that. You'll also be able to see, uh, you know, who has attended and how long they have stayed. Um, if you are charging. Uh, for your uh, for your event, uh, the conference provider, in many cases, has a payment solution. Um, in some cases, that's a payment solution. That's an e-commerce solution, and in other cases, uh, they will uh, you know arrange for check delivery. Conference provider often has surveys and will often provide follow up as well. Content sharing, content distribution and content review. Um, so in the in days past, content would be shared uh, sometimes over a teleconference and again sometimes in person. So on an in-person setting that's one thing. With teleconference, you know, documents had to be emailed, often, you know, pray for safe delivery. Um, with a webinar, we have a whole different, whole different ball game these days because the documents are are, are available for review online. Uh, you know, attendees and presenters can take a look at a shared document together, uh, consider that document together, uh, and, and they can be shared and annotated in real time. Um, in some of the more advanced platforms, and certainly in, in WebEx and, and a couple of the others, uh, you can have a group of people working on the same document in a collaborative uh, works, working space 
and uh, you know, and and sharing sharing documents that way. Much more much more advanced these days. Um, recording of the event. Um, in the old days, you know, you might have had an audio recording, some transcription and notes attached to a teleconference. I didn't see a whole lot of recording of live conferences, certainly. That was just basic note-taking. But right now with a webinar, uh, you know, one-click audio is pretty much the rule of the day, and that is the state of the art. So you can have a, have a, uh, have a webinar, set it to record, and shortly after, afterward, you know, have a button to be able to access that recording and review it uh, on demand 24-7. Um, some of the alternatives to, you know, to, to, to hosting it on a conferences uh, server is to download it to your own. And in most cases, you can do that uh, with, uh, with, with, with great, great ease. Um, and then last but not least, let's talk a little bit about the psychology of online training. we find out exactly why webinars are so powerful. A webinar is a way for people to experience something in a group setting before they have to do it themselves. Uh, the intimidation of doing something new is greatly, greatly reduced when people have the opportunity to walk through something on a trial run with an expert without the fear of making a mistake. Um, a virtual setting is also very, very non-threatening. Um, you know, a lot of people are just basically more comfortable interacting in a virtual space, uh, and that can be easier than having people stare at them when they raise their hand and ask a question. Uh, people learn from other people's questions. Uh, if you have ten people in a room, you know, ten, uh, you know, nine people may have the same question, and answering that question for one person answers it for everybody. So it really does, you know, scale, scale training. Um, the other thing that, that's, you know, really, really worth considering is, is the fact that, that a long session doesn't keep everybody very, very focused for a long time. It takes tremendous skill to keep everybody, uh, you know, on the same page, to keep everybody totally engaged in a discussion over many, many hours. So a webinar gives you an opportunity to have shorter bursts of training, um, and you can do that on a regular basis with frequent training sessions, and that gives you a better, you know, a better shot at keeping people focused. Uh, and it also lets you keep everybody in the loop at all times. Uh, again, you know, you don't have to have everybody there at the same time necessarily because you have recording uh, functions, because you have the ability to, uh, to go back and revisit the training. Uh, also, you know, going back and revisiting training after you've already been through it, uh, you know, enhances and expands the, uh, you know, a participant's ability to retain information that they heard the first time. 